Let's talk about how players are rewarded in RPGs, and perhaps more importantly, why. <laughs> When I refer to rewards in role-playing games, there is quite a few different forms that this can take. Most commonly we see this as advancement. For the character, for example, experience, resources, uh, social, contacts, or reputations, whatever the case might be. There's also temporary rewards, such as modifiers to your next role or a consumable resource. There are story rewards, uh, accomplishing the goals that your character has, or narrative control over a scene, and as well there is a simple social reward of being the spotlight character. Now I'm a firm believer that whenever you read a system it should tell the GM what the game is about, but a lot of players don't read the system, so for them to learn what the game is about, the most obvious method is the rewards. They'll tell the character what they're going to be rewarded for doing, therefore that's what the game is about, at least to start. It's common for people to view reward systems from a very gamist mindset. Do this action, get this reward, and it's almost a Pavlovian response. But there's so much more that it can do. Really, rewards can promote the kind of behavior that you want to see in play. And whether that is a gamist system or not, it can be very beneficial to any system. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that for a lot of players, fun is its own reward and they don't need a mechanic to tell them otherwise. However, while there are a lot of systems that don't have mechanics, there are probably many more that do. And the reason they'll have a reward mechanic is because players often enjoy feedback. Now, you could also even make an argument that in some cases the spotlight is, is, is its own reward. Fiasco is a good example. There are no reward mechanics exactly in Fiasco, and the goal of the game isn't necessarily even to see a positive outcome for your character. You could argue that a player who is a very engaging character and one that's involved in a lot of storylines will get more scene time and will be involved in more character scenes, but that's probably not something that was intentionally designed and is simply a result of the social event and play. I believe that at their very best, rewards can create a feedback cycle. They can encourage behavior that is positive to the game, and while they can't necessarily discourage behavior that isn't positive, they won't reward it. First, they can incentivize the social patterns as a style of play, such as My Life with Master. In this game, players of course will want to seek out contact with the characters that are important to them in their story, and because they need the points of love as a mechanic in the game, they will have a reason to do it mechanically. You can also alter those social patterns in minor ways, and My Life with Master does this as well, by giving additional dice into conflict to a character where the player pushes that character to be a little bit more intense in the scene, perhaps uh, more personal or more physical. And while that might not be exactly where they might have brought the story originally, it does make the story much more deep by doing so. My final thought on this is that it's not uncommon for GMs to take issue with certain player behaviors. There's a plethora of advice out there on how to deal with problem players of all sorts. But we must consider whether the game we've been playing has been encouraging this through play. It brings forth a certain level of behavioral momentum, which would be an excellent topic for another time. Links for blackboards and minute games are on screen and below. Video replies and comments are very welcome. And if you're interested in playing a game that I've talked about, I would like to try to open this up on Google+. There is a link for the notes as well. Thanks for watching, and I hope that every game that you have is better than the last.